Portugal has just taken delivery of its first A29N Super Tucanos. And what makes this story interesting is not simply that Lisbon bought a turboprop attack aircraft. It's how quickly the country moved once the decision finally landed, how much of the real timeline was actually eaten by bureaucracy rather than production, and most importantly, how the aircraft's intended mission has flipped almost 180 degrees under the pressure of lessons learned from Ukraine. Portugal formally accepted the first five aircraft at Ogma's facilities near Lisbon, Ogma being the Portuguese aerospace company owned by Embraer. That detail matters because it hints at the real engine behind this acquisition, not just buying an airplane but integrating it into a domestic industrial ecosystem. One year earlier, on December 16, 2024, Portugal ordered 12 A29 in Super Tucanos for roughly 200 million euros. In European defense procurement terms, a first batch arriving inside 12 months is unusually fast. Yet the more revealing line is this. The aircraft themselves reportedly ferried into Portugal by late August 2025 and then spent time receiving Portuguese-specified integrations and systems work at Ojima. So the speed here isn't just Embraer building at pace, it's a procurement model that leans on local integration capacity to compress timelines. And then there's the price. Around 12 million euros per aircraft is the kind of figure that makes finance ministries sit up and listen, especially when modern jet trainers, light fighters, or advanced UAV systems can spiral far beyond that once you add sensors, weapons, training, spares, and sustainment. The catch, of course, is that these airframes are described as used. That explains the rapid availability and the attractive per unit cost, but it also raises a strategic question. What does Portugal value more right now? perfectly fresh airframes or a capability in hand with NATO standard integration while the threat environment is changing faster than procurement cycles can track? Because the real twist is why Portugal is buying the A29N at all. For years, Super Tucano procurement in European discussions was framed in an older logic, a rugged, cost-effective platform for peace support and low-intensity operations often imagined in Africa, where endurance, low operating costs, and a pilot's eyes on the battlefield can be more valuable than supersonic speed. In that role, the aircraft is almost a textbook solution. It can loiter, carry precision and unguided munitions, operate from relatively austere infrastructure, and provide persistent presence without consuming the flight hour budgets of high-end fighters. The Super Tucano's track record reinforces that perception. In Afghanistan, for example, the platform's use as a light strike and close air support asset showed how a small fleet could generate a high operational tempo, the kind of sortie volume that is difficult to maintain with complex jets in harsh conditions. But Portugal's stated emphasis today is different, and it reflects a lesson NATO has been absorbing in real time since 2022. The air domain is being flooded by drones, cheap ones, fast ones, slow ones, one-way attack systems, reconnaissance quadcopters, and everything in between. This is where Ukraine's experience becomes a catalyst. If a modern battlefield can be saturated with low-cost UAVs, then the defense equation changes. Shooting down a drone with a high-end surface-to-air missile can be tactically necessary but strategically inefficient. Burning through expensive interceptors to defeat disposable threats is a recipe for depletion. So what does a rational air force do when it sees that future coming? It looks for a middle layer, something that can hunt drones at a cost per intercept that doesn't bankrupt the defender. That is where the A-29N's mission FLIP becomes important. A counterinsurgency turboprop being discussed as a counter-drone asset sounds counterintuitive until you unpack the actual requirements. Many drones, especially those used for reconnaissance and loitering, are not fast. They may be numerous, but they are often vulnerable to guns, low-cost missiles, and even directed tactics that don't require the exquisite sensors of a frontline fighter. A platform like the Super Tucano can stay airborne for long periods, patrol wide areas, and respond quickly once queued. It can potentially carry electro-optical sensors suitable for spotting small aerial targets, and crucially, it can do this while preserving high-end jets for missions only they can perform, air policing, deterrence, and integration into NATO's broader air combat architecture. This is also why the N in A29N matters. The aircraft is presented as fully aligned with NATO standards, which in practice points toward communications, identification systems, navigation, data links, and interoperability, exactly the kind of plumbing that turns a standalone aircraft into a node in a network. Counter-drone warfare is not just about the shooter. It is about detection, classification, queuing, and deconfliction. If Portugal wants the Super Tucano to be a drone hunter, it must be integrated into a broader sensor-to-shooter chain, radars, passive detection, ground observers, and data sharing with allies. In other words, the A29N's value is multiplied if it can be tasked and retasked rapidly with reliable situational awareness, 
rather than flying blind patrols hoping to stumble across a target. Embraer has also signaled the direction of travel by talking about a specific update path that effectively turns the Super Tucano into a specialized counter UAS fighter and that this package could be applied to existing aircraft. This is more than marketing. It acknowledges a market reality. Countries want modular upgrades that can be pulled onto aircraft already purchased rather than waiting for a brand new variant that arrives years later. If Lisbon can field a baseline NATO-compatible A29N now, and then scale it into a more purpose-built counter-drone configuration as tactics and technology mature, it is essentially buying into an upgrade pipeline rather than a frozen capability. Still, there are limits, and serious analysts should say them out loud. A turboprop aircraft is not a magic answer to every drone problem. Some drones fly low and slow, yes, but others are small, difficult to detect, and appear with little warning. Some are protected by electronic warfare environments that complicate sensors and data links. Some may be used in swarms where the challenge is not a single intercept, but a sustained, layered defense. And if the adversary escalates to faster, higher-end unmanned systems, a light aircraft can quickly find itself outside its comfort zone. So the A29N should be seen as one layer in a broader architecture, not the architecture itself. Which brings us back to the most revealing part of Portugal's story. It took far longer to decide than to deliver. Discussions about wanting 12 Super Tucanos were circulating as far back as spring 2023. The aircraft arrived effectively at the end of 2025. That gap is not explained by assembly lines. It is explained by the friction that democratic procurement systems often impose. Requirements debates, budget cycles, approvals, and political signaling. Yet the security environment is no longer patient. Ukraine has shown that threats evolve inside a single season, not inside a 10-year modernization plan. So when Portugal finally signs in December 2024 and receives aircraft a year later, it's a reminder that speed is possible if governments choose to prioritize it and leverage industrial partners creatively. And perhaps that is the wider NATO lesson here. Portugal is not buying a prestige platform, it is buying a practical one, then reshaping its role to meet a new kind of air threat. The Super Tucano was once a symbol of low-intensity war and expeditionary policing. Now it is being discussed as a tool for defending airspace from the cheapest, most proliferated aircraft on Earth. The question is not whether this aircraft is perfect. The question is whether Portugal is building a force that can adapt faster than the threats it faces. Because in modern air defense, the most dangerous assumption is not that the enemy is strong, it's that the enemy will stay the same.